Hey Jim. Uh, so, today we're going to be talking about DeFire. Uh, I've had a lot of people actually ask me, one, one in particular uh, was just asking how we can get maximum damage, how we can get maximum DeFire, uh, talk about DeFire in general, and I thought if I'm talking about DeFire I'll add all the other elements like attack and all sorts of everything else, trying to explain everything in its fullest. Uh, so, let's start with Defire. So, to unlock Defire, you need to be Divine 60. Uh, to hit Divine 60, you pretty much need a 40 star pet, do your Apothesis quest, level up to 60, it takes about a week. Uh, once you've done that, you'll start unlocking this page, which is the Divine Fire page. Uh, this is on my Shadow Knight, so if you can, we're on Hikan today. Uh, I do have my other account open as well, so we can kind of compare stats and see sort of what the accounts are doing and sort of what damage they're hitting. So one thing in well one thing you need to know about Defire is there's three types of Defire. You've got the Universal Flames, the Infernal Flames, and the Genesis Flames. Uh, there is rumours of another level 65 Defire coming, but we've got no news on that thus far, so it's gonna be a case of when it comes uh, I'll, I'll get a video on it and we can talk about it in detail. But for now, uh, Genesis is the highest grade. Uh, you do have a set bonus, so as you can see on the screen, you should be able to see on the screen. Uh, our set bonus for Genesis Flame is as follows. Once you have three pieces, you'll have a critical hit, critical strike rate by six, which is, just means critical attack. That's critical attack 6%. Uh, at level 5 you get crit damage, so critical strike damage by 30%, so that's crit damage. And then at level 8, that goes up to 10%, you get 30% steal, and you also get a 100% secret damage. Um, so ideally you do want to try and max it, you want to try and have the maximum full eight, full genesis. Uh, the biggest, so if you're a beginner into the whole fire thing, uh, you really want to max these genesis out. Uh, the reason is you're looking at the main stats, so <coughs> I can't actually quite pause it. But uh, so if, if if you look carefully, you'll see under bonus level 20 out of 20, you'll see divine damage. Uh, what you want is you want to max your divine damage and your human divine damage, and the only way to do that is by maxing your genesis. Uh, looking at your stats, you'll see it here: divine damage 240. That is currently the maximum. I know with the 65 Genesis that are meant to be coming, maybe at the end of the year, maybe next year, uh, maybe tomorrow, Like that's the thing, we never know, uh, we'd never get enough information on this. Uh, it is rumoured for the end of the year, it's also rumoured for next year, so we don't know what's happening yet. But uh, they that will go up to 5,800 I think it is. So, you know, the, the new Genesis is going to blow this one out of the water, but in the meantime, we're looking at 2,400, which is the absolute maximum. Uh, divine damage is based on your character, which is why it's on the character screen. Uh, if, if you max your other Genesis, so we can look here at the Wukong, uh, you'll see at the bottom here, Divine damage to 40 as well, so 2400. Um, right, so let me quickly explain how that works. So points 1, points 2, uh, 4 and 5 are completely on the character, and then 6, 7, Eight and three will be human damage. So you can see in in the main, uh, and that kind of rounds it up. So if I was a beginner, uh, I would prioritize human damage. This is because I'll have three summons in most cases. Three summons means three times this this damage buff gets applied. So if you have the choice, if you have select boxes, try to aim for three, six, seven, and eight. Uh, they're going to give you the most amount of damage uh, if you want to see like a direct impact on your DPS and then one, two, th four, uh, four and five are for your person. It's a bit harder to work on your person so kind of leave them for a little later. Uh, you could always get them all up to like 10 and then push the human ones up to 20 and then get these ones up to 20 after. I mean in the end you're going to want them all 20 anyway. So. Uh, so once you've done that, once you've kind of got your base genesis is in, sort of get your 8 set, doesn't really matter what it rolls, just try and hit everything to 20 so you have a good base set, your damage will be quite decent. The next thing you want to do is uh, look at the extra attributes. So the extra attributes are completely random. I might have... So, yeah, uh, I don't actually have one that's locked, but... 
Uh, in most cases, you get a white, a blue, a purple, and an orange stat. So as you can see in this one, I've got the orange stat, which is the crit damage, 360. That's the highest amount of crit damage you can get on a Genesis. So I've rolled that twice, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, and then I've rolled a blue crit attack, which isn't so good, but it's better than tenacity. Uh, when you're rolling your Genesis's, the thing you want to be point looking out for the most is the crit damage and the crit attack. So they roll directly here. So going back to your character, you'll see crit attack. So on hit can over here, we have 15.91% crit attack. And we have 254% crit damage. <coughs> So what that means is, every time Hiken swings his sword, he has close to 16% chance to hit a crit. And when he does hit a crit, he'll hit 254 times the damage that he would normally output. So, you can see that being quite important. Really, you want to try and get the balance of best, like the best of both. I'd say the stronger builds are looking at about 20-25% crit attack, and maintaining the 250% crit damage. That would give you ridiculous DPS, like it would probably give you one of the better DPS in the game. Uh, so both on Hiken and on Little Big Senpai I'm trying to hit sort of in that margin. I mean I could show you Little Big Senpai as well. Uh, let's see, Little Big Senpai, here we are. So again I've got 16% and 250 on Little Big as well. So you guys can have a look at my stats. Um, right, if you're a Paladin, so let's, let's have a look at just some stats and some numbers that you want to be rolling. So, as a Paladin, you're good. each one of these stats is going to give you a boost. It doesn't matter what class you are. So, as a Paladin, the main stat that you're going to want is your M attack. Um, so, that, that's Paladin, Necromancer, uh, Mage. For Shadow Knights, uh, Vampires, Rangers, you're going to want the P attack. Now, Paladin's a bit of a weird class because it doesn't actually have a very high M attack. So, sort of a higher range of M attack, you're looking at about 6,000. So, I want to, personally, I'm aiming to hit the 6,000 M attack mark. To be able to do that, I need to get to 140, which I'm not yet. Um, I'm also looking at sort of maxing my potency runes and my Berserker one, sorry. Uh, so, there's, there's, little, there's little things you could be doing, whether it's can, just putting a higher anima in. Try and hit the 6,000 M attack. Uh, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm six, about 550, five, just like the 600 off, so for me it, it's an achievable goal. Uh, for Shadow Knights, so looking at my Shadow Knight, uh, so this isn't very high, again, Hiken isn't maxed, not by any means, like I, I could still get more attack by Divine plus 9, so my weapon isn't maxed yet. So I'd say for Hiken I could probably do about 12k quite comfortably. Uh, 12k attack, physical attack, uh, again then applied into these, uh, you'll be doing a ridiculous amount of damage. So for every sort of, you know, one M attack or P attack you get up, when amplified by this and the whole Divine Fire system, your damage output is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to quickly touch elements because that's something people don't talk about much, but elements are super, super important. So, when I first started the game, there was no news on elements. People weren't building elements. Well, they were, but they weren't telling me about it. So, everyone had 60 elements, and I never knew why. Everyone always goes, oh, you get a Super Citrine out of it. Uh, there is no such thing as a free Super Citrine. Uh, that's a myth. So, the way elements works work is, for each element you have, uh, so it'd be a single element, whether it's earth, wind, water, fire, etc. Uh, you pick the highest element, so in my case it's earth, and for every plus on your element, you get 1% damage. So on Hiken, I have 87 element, which means I have an 87% damage buff on him. Which is absolutely, like, for how little you only have to work on making elements, it's definitely worth getting that little, even if it's 1%, even if it's one more element, it's just worth that little bit more. Uh, looking back at Little Big Senpai, I have 80, 80, uh, 85, but again, I have Max's Goddess, so it, it, you could, I could push that to 86. Uh, I am looking at replacing the helmet, so probably even 90, just to really try and max that damage. Uh, going back to the Defire, so we can have a look at Little Big Senpai. Here you can see that we're rolling crit damage, crit attack, which is super, super important. 
uh, that is the one that's going to give you the highest rating as well. So when you see people with like the 17,000 ratings, it's because they've rolled crit attack and crit damage. Tenacity really doesn't give you much. So you can see like here, tenacity. Uh, and you can see here, I've got I've rolled tenacity twice and you can see the damage and just how low that is. Personally, this needs to change. This needs to change. I've got horrific two and sit two and eight, and I can't seem to get that done. Um, right. So yeah, I mean, we can, we can have a look, and you can just see I'm I'm absolutely going for damage. I'm going for attack. I'm really hoping on these two pieces I get the crit attack because I do have quite a lot of crit damage. I don't really want to push the sort of three hundred percent mark, especially when I'm not critting enough. Um. One so one other thing that you guys want to point out, so like let's just just to recap that you don't want tenacity, you want damage and you want attack. Uh, but when I said that uh, little big senpai actually has sixteen percent crit attack, that's in that's overall. If you then go into your star power, so in star power, this is sort of your divine skills. Uh, you can see sort of which skills are where. So here, Deities of Justice, which is Holy Judgment. If you max this side of Holy Judgment, you do get 18% crit attack. So whenever a Paladin is using Holy Judgment, I'm actually doing 16 plus the 18%. So on a Paladin, I'm doing a bit more DPS than let's say another class because I have that in my skill set. So if you do have any skills, again, I don't know every class off by heart, but if you see that your class has this, uh, I would max it because the extra crit attack is really really important. Uh, I can do a video on sort of my Paladin and also my Shadow Knight and what I've maxed uh, just to show you on Shadow Knight as well. Uh, Shadow Knight has it on, if I'm not wrong, is it this one? No. Uh, <coughs> sorry. I think it's this one. Yeah, so for Shadow Knight I would always max this bottom bit because you do have 11% critical strike. So again, I've got 15.9% plus the 11%. Uh, it it definitely adds a lot. Uh, so you're looking at close to 20% every time I use my chains. Right. Uh, so yeah, we've, we've covered what element does. We've covered what sort of attack does and the sort of stats you want to be hitting. What I wanted to show you is sort of the higher echelons of players. So on here can I do about 35k damage uh, when we're doing Thunder. On Little Big Senpai I'm doing about 36k. So you kind of see the where, where my where my damage and my sort of gears are and also where my uh, defire is. Uh, one person I do want to look at here is Mr. Anderson. So he's a player that's on 17900. Ooh, 1790 even. Yeah. Uh, I don't actually know what the actual other number is. 290. So it's 17290. Uh, right, cool. So here you can see he's rolled crit damage, crit damage, attack. Oh, I, I really do wish for a 450 attack. Anyone that gets a 450 attack, absolutely lucky. Here we go, another 450 attack. So you can see the sort of numbers he's hitting, right? Now, looking at Mr. Anderson, he's got 1k D fire on top of me, which means. Really, he's got maybe a little bit more crit attack and a little bit more crit damage. In general, his M attack is about the same. Like, I know he has the 6k M attack, so I can't really compare him a little big senpai. Uh, we can have a look at the leaderboards. And you can see here, he's almost hit 1 million damage. Now, this, I know for a fact, isn't his final number. I know he can go well above a million right now. He hasn't done this in a while. How can I get elements and equipments? Uh, I'll answer that in one second. Uh, so if we go back to a little big. So the last time I attempted this, I did 500k damage. So the fact that he's doing double my damage, it's literally down to the fact that he has about 3% more crit chance than I do. About the same crit damage. And he just has more M attack. Uh, also, so it's, it's really down to about 1000 D fire is the difference and then the M attack. So when you're working on stuff, you want to be working on your attack and you want to be working on your elements and then your defire. Uh, all of it plays a huge part. So as you can see, I've gone 5,200, uh, uh, yeah, 520,000. Right, one more thing 
uh, I'm going to add in regards to sort of upping your damage. Uh, here on Little Big Senpai, I'm not working on my pets. Uh, anyone that knows me knows that I'm not actually working on these pets. Uh, I'm probably going to get rid of both of them. So for now, they're just they're sort of placeholder pets. I have opted for the attack gifts. So I have rolled attack gifts on them. But for now, they're just there. I am, I am going to eventually move this alongside Hitken. And I will be taking Hitken's pets. Uh, and then kind of playing both accounts with the same pets. So, to boost your damage higher, uh, as I said, your pets will have the Divine Fire damage, so you've got 2,400 on your pets as well. So we've talked about how to increase our strength, how can we increase our pet strength, because you've got three of them, and for every sort of one damage you're going to do, they're going to do one damage each as well. The fact that there's three of them means that it's really, really important that you put damage on them as well. Uh, attack gifts are a great way, so you can see that my panda gains... 550 bonus attack from just gifts alone, uh, which is huge, getting him up to 6,000 M attack. Um, the higher the M attack on your pet, on your pets, or the higher the physical attack if you're a physical unit, um, the higher the damage. In order to hit sort of the higher numbers, we're going to go back to hit Ken, and I can show you. So here on Wukong, uh, you can see that I have 11,000 11, physical attack and 8,000 M attack. Uh, so once these pets move on to Little Big Senpai, expect this damage to go up to probably over 10k more than what he's currently doing. This, these, these numbers are going to make a huge difference on his DPS, but in order to get that, you need to transfer. So, you know, for now I'm trying to work on getting his damage up to about the 50k mark without these pets, and then when I put them on, hopefully we'll explode out of control. Um, so you kind of want to look at pets that have these really high insane numbers. So you're looking at Wukong, you're looking at Ruby, Lilla. So I'll show you Ruby. Uh, my Ruby's not so great, but here is Ruby. Uh, another one is Lilla. I don't actually own, well I did own one, but I think I gave it away. But Lilla's another one. So you've got sort of three pets that are your SSS tier pets. These are, these are the ones that you really want to be going after if you're a player like me who wants to just hit a ridiculous amount of damage. If your goal is to hit damage, and I promise you in this game, damage is more important than BP. Um, this is the sort of sacrifice you need to make. You need to invest, get the Wukong, get the Lilla, get the Ruby. Uh, there are more pets coming out. I know that, um, so if we go into Knight, hover over Dervish. So you can see at the bottom that it says Emerald, Thin, Glass Laura, Rainbow Dog. I know that Glass Laura is meant to be really good. Uh, so there are pets coming. So if you don't want to invest now, you can maybe save up a little and when that comes out, invest in them. And they're meant to sort of compete with the whole Ruby. Uh, also, look at your skills. So with Wukong, he just does damage on his skills. But with Ruby, so if, you, if, you're, if you're really keen on doing sort of maximum echelons of the damage, you want to try and get a 200 star Ruby. Once Ruby hits 200 star, you get this passive, which every 60 seconds you give you a 40% that attack buff on pets. This makes all the difference. You can, like genuinely, with a 200 star ruby, your damage can go up from, like just because of this buff by 40%, you're looking at maybe 10k damage just because you have this. Ruby is probably the most essential pet in the game. In saying that, I am maxing my Wukong. Uh, you know, that's a personal preference move. I think Wukong has better stats than Ruby does overall, but the 40% so you got to hit the 200 star to hit the 40% damage buff. Uh, and for that reason, I've kind of devised a plan where I'm going to get my Wukong up as high as I can and still get benefit the 40% from Ruby. You know, you don't have to have Ruby really strong. Uh, of course, both pets are maximum normal composed. So as you know, there's, there's multiple ways of composing in the game. So you kind of want to go and do your normal composing, not your divine composing. Divine composing is entirely star based. It's a BP trap. You're just going to be getting BP, but never really going stronger. So you want to be doing your normal composes. Normal composes will add as much physical and magical attack as humanly possible. Uh, I'm sure I'll answer some questions and I'll come back to all this. So you asked me how elements are made on equipment. In order to make element to gear, uh, you get redstones. I know there's multiple ways people do it. Uh, they make lots of fresh accounts, so you can make like 20, 30 accounts. Uh, I think you get given 18 redstones on a fresh account, and then you roll gear, if it doesn't work, delete the account, start again. 
uh, if you roll that sort of 18 on 18 account, eventually you'll get something with decent elements. Uh, if you are one of those guys that are doing gear rerolls, I would probably aim for sort of let's say plus nine. So if you get plus nine or plus ten on an elemented gear by about elite or super, that is absolutely like phenomenal. And then anything you gain beyond that is just going to hyper roll. So you're going to get like the thirteens, the fifteens, and that would give you ridiculous. You'd have better gear than I do, simply put. Uh, I think on Little Big Senpai when I was doing the rolls, I stopped at about plus eight so I got to like elite eight and then for super I just tried to chance it and get it over ten and in most cases it worked uh, so yeah that's that's how you get the element gear um, second question are you able to transfer from next server when's the deadline uh, so you can transfer all the servers are unlocked with the exception of Elder City so if you wanted to come to Elder City you need to wait six months so all new servers open the doors in six months but if you have an account in Elven City, you can move out. So I can move my account to Elysium, but I can't move one back into Elven. Um, I got here late. Can you explain to me the bonus attributes and how they roll and how to roll them from Defire? <coughs> uh, and is it with a Fire Crystal? Uh, yeah, so it is with a Fire Crystal. So let's have a look. I don't actually have a Genesis right now, but. Um, so when when you're rolling sort of your defire um, let's do this so you do that you put material in uh once this hits level so once it's once it's five out of 20 you need to have a breakthrough uh, in order to in order to do this you do need sort of your fire crystals let me uh, you can you can use any of these fire crystals. I, I will just move my camera so you guys can see. You guys don't need to see the map. Cool. Uh, right. So you can see the fire crystals at the bottom. So you just kind of go here, into here, compose, click. Uh, I'll just use twenty because why the hell not? So there we go. That's your first breakthrough. Uh, use 16,000 star points to do the first breakthrough. It's a little bit more for Genesis. Uh, and then as you break through, you'll unlock a minor attribute. Uh, we're not going to do that because that would be an absolute waste. But So there's there's three steps. You can get, you can get attributes three times. So you can see you've got critical damage, critical damage, critical attack. Uh, that's because I got critical damage at level 5, uh, critical damage again at level 10, and then critical attack at level 15. And then there isn't one for 20. So... That kind of rounds out these substats, uh, and yeah, you do use the fire crystals. So you can use the blue ones, the yellow ones, which are a bit harder to get, and the red ones, which are all impossible to get. Uh, right, put them away. Cool. So going back to sort of the pets, I was going to talk about composing and how important it is. Uh, wait, let me answer this last question. Uh, how do you build up Genesis? Okay, so the way I build up Genesis, uh, on Hiken, I will be doing Thunder Runs. So I'll be coming over here and doing Thunder daily. So get them done daily. You'll get either Infernals or Genesis's drop. Uh, you'll get sort of Defire crystals. You'll get all sorts of other things, even skills. So it's always quite beneficial. On Little Big Senpai, I was quite... Uh, what's the word? Impatient? <laughs> I was very impatient. So the way I built up Little Big Senpai was throwing all the EPs I had at it. Uh, I highly, highly don't recommend it unless you have a bottomless wallet. So, sort of going to item, other, and here you can find Divine Fire Crystals. Uh, they are very expensive, to sort of max the Genesis, you're looking at 5 or 6 from 15 to 20. Of these so to get from 15 to 20 you're looking at about 3k apps uh, to get from sort of 0 to 20 you're looking at probably close to like 6k 5 to 6k EPs uh, and then that on top of that you kind of need these star points at the bottom so and then if you want star points you can go into here and buy more star points uh, again it depends how bottomless your wallet is. Each Genesis can genuinely cost you up to 10k EPs if you don't have the star points, if you don't have the crystals. Uh, so, 
<coughs> like if that's that's completely down to you, you can just throw money at all your problems. Uh, or you could just do thunder every day. So on here can I on Little Big Senpai and here can I do do thunder every single day. I try and get it done as much as often. Like uh, you know, you can do it twice a day, so you just get it done as much as you can. Um, in fact, I think I'm the only. I think we're the only team on this server that does thunder. So I've got my team. We just go in, we do it. Uh, try and make yourself a team. I know there are definitely people out there that are strong enough. Sort of. I can show you who comes in with me, and then sort of their divine level. So, you know, I, I'm a given. I'm 16k. Uh, and then sort of, I'm sure Dad could probably do Genesis uh, Thunder. I'm surprised he's not doing it yet. Sort of, you, you kind of need sort of about 11k D fire, and I think you go in like if you have a team full of 11k D fire guys, you can do it. Uh, so divine fire crystal turn Genesis. Oh no no no! So uh, divine fire crystals do not turn into Genesis. They use the power up Genesis. So you use them to power them up. Uh, you have to use jungle fire so the only way to actually obtain genesis with the exception of doing them through thunder or events is jungle fire uh divine fire crystals are only used to level them up uh and i can show you the sort of cost of them so slot one two and three cost 150 jungle fire slots two uh sorry four five and six will cost 200 and then seven and eight will cost 250. Uh, of course, I don't have enough right at the moment. Uh, if I did, I'd sort of level one up in front of you guys. Show you how bad my rolls are. <coughs> right. Uh, any other questions? Uh, so yeah, jungle fires. They do. Dr they don't actually drop. So you can't get a jungle fire drop. The only way to attain jungle fire is by doing this. So you come over here, decompose, and then decompose. Uh, any universals, infernals, or genesis flames that you get. So if you have a universal flame, or a genesis flame, or a infernal flame, that's awesome, uh, you can get them. So one universal flame will give you one jungle fire, infernal flame will give you five jungle fire, and genesis flame will give you 25 jungle fire. Uh, admittedly, it's only a fraction of what it costs to make one, so you would need to scrap Two, four, six, eight, ten. You'd need to scrap up twelve Genesises to make one Genesis. Yeah, exactly. So you you get you get the Infernals and all that through Tomb, uh, which admittedly is limited to twice a day. So you can only really get two a day. It does take a ridiculously long time to get these Genesises. Uh, <coughs> the easiest way for new servers is Throne Scrambler comes out. Uh, this is no longer a thing, it's actually just expired on our server. So if you are playing from Elven, uh, this has just expired. So the rewards were as such. Uh, oops. So if you look at the rewards, uh, every week, the rank one player, which in Paladin was myself, would get a Genesis frame for free. Uh, and then two, three, four, five would all get rewards as well. Um, every day you had a chance, so the higher you could climb in the tower, you had a chance to pull a Genesis or an Inferno. Of course, if you can p sort of go up to the higher echelons of like 80, 90, uh, I think I was hitting 80 the first week in. So again, I was getting quite lucky through here. And also first time completing gave you a bunch of rewards. Uh, so I think I reached 90, I never got to the 100 mark. But, so I did get some Genesis Flames from here as well. Uh, so if you didn't do it through this event, Genesis will take you months to finish it. Unless you get really lucky, like you could get really lucky and pull two Genesis every single day from Thunder. Two weeks ago, Divine, 56, Fire Tomb Heart. Uh, Jansen Zhang, I, I'm, probably saying, I'm probably saying your name wrong, sorry. but uh, So to answer your question, if you're level 56, I would get onto Chaos Scar, uh, do your dailies, get yourself to 60. From about where you are, it'll take you two to three days to get there. Uh, and then once you do that, jump straight into... Well, okay, so I don't know what server you're on, but if you're on sort of an older server, you could probably ask someone and they will just throw you into a Thunder team. You'll find lots of people that are genuinely just boosting people for Thunder. If you're on a newer server, there's only one Thunder team. 
and I don't think we, we're strong enough to boost anyone, so uh, you would have to jump straight into Lava Shrine and then do the grind the old fashioned way, which is, you know, get onto Lava, go up a little, then go into Ghost. Um, yeah, Veil, vale, uh, yeah, I, 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 I know who you are. Uh, so with you, uh, you should be doing Ghost, so try and hit Ghost every day, get yourself a full set of Infernals, maybe try and level them up a little. Um, the problem is I don't like wasting resources, so for me, leveling up an Infernal felt like a waste. But it was only because I had the Throne Scrambler event. Uh, now that that's gone, the only way to obtain Genesis is, is by grinding them in Thunder. Uh, so, and in order to be able to do Thunder, you need damage, so you'd have to do Ghost. So get Ghost done as, as much as you can, twice a day. Pray that you get some good Infernals, pray you get some good crit attack rolls. And then once you and sort of some legion mates or some friends can get into a thunder run, uh, do thunder. To be able to judge when you can do thunder, you need about 55,000 DPS. Uh, 60k would be absolutely ideal. Uh, so, for example, if you hit 20k damage uh, and then you had a team sort of five, so you did 20k, sort of another guy did 20k, that's 40k maybe another 20k at 60k and then you can have two noobs doing sort of 5 to 6k and that would that would kind of get you through quite comfortably because you're on 70k total DPS. Uh, of course even 20k is quite a hard number to hit. On our server I think only I'm Sodian, Dad and myself are above 30, uh, 20k. So it, it, it does, it, it, is, it is a number that's quite difficult to reach. Uh, Alternatively, you can go in with that 15k, but then you'd need a whole team of sort of everyone doing 15 to 10k damage. But yeah, you'd, you'd need five man to do thunder. Um, any other questions? I think we're good. Right, uh, so I'm just going to round this video off. Uh, in order to round this video off, I'll just quickly sort of TLDR everything that we've done. So looking at Divine Fire, you want to try and max your Divine Fire as much as possible, so the higher the number the better. Uh, you'll, the stats you're really aiming for is crit damage and crit attack, um, and you want them of course to be Genesis. Uh, in the meantime you also want to work on your elements because each element is going to give you damage. Uh, you want to be working on your attack, whether it's physical or magical based on your class, and try and maximize that as much as possible. Uh, you can see here I've actually got no so sort of nothing on these gears whilst uh, these two pieces have divine nine and divine seven so really max your necklace max your weapon they're the ones that they're the ones that's you know really gonna help boost you um, of course anima uh, one thing we don't touch upon is to the the rich boy tactic to get much much more M attack or P attack is anima uh, anima do cost a fortune, so like I've spent 20k on my animas each. Uh, so you're looking with anima, you can see the bonus attribute being 26%. So my weapon gives, let's say, 1000 attack. I then get 26% on top of that just because I own an anima. Uh, you can get cheaper animas, and they give very similar sort of numbers 18 here. You can go to sort of 12%. Anima make a huge difference. If you're going for damage, I would buy two anima, one on your necklace, one on your weapon, and make it as high as possible. If you're going for BP, I would try and get a lower tier anima, but on all your gear, that way you get more BP. So you kind of need to find the middle ground. Uh, one other question, how do you make EPs without buying EPs? I've seen <laughs> dumping cash, I don't want to be there. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Right, so the way to make EPs, there's 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 actually quite a few ways to make EPs. Uh, so one way is the the daily quests. So if you go into your events tab, you'll be able to see there's certain events in the day. So Legion Chamber, if your Legion can get in the top four legions, so top four legion gets the reward. Uh, you can make I think the lowest you can get on there is 45 EPs. So if you have like a 30 man legion and everyone does chamber. I think you all get about 40 EPs or something around there. Uh, if you take Chamber Solo, so I, when this server opened, I was taking Chamber Solo. So that's why I wasn't recruiting anyone because I could just kill Chamber Boss alone and I was strong enough to sort of take on any other Legion Solo. 
uh, I was making 592 EPs per day from just Legion Chamber, and that's an everyday event. So server time 8 p.m. Sorry, server time 6 p.m. Uh, you jump on chamber, you do damage to the boss, you get into the top four legion, and then you get EP split among your legion uh, for everyone that's damaged. Uh, if you solo it, that's 592 EPs, absolutely field day. Uh, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, you can do Evil Abyss. Again, you're looking at sort of, you, you'll make anywhere between sort of 60 to 100 EPs per day, uh, sorry, per sort of Evil Abyss. Uh, if you're in the sort of upper echelons of players, or in a legion like mine where we only recruit very small amounts so we know we can take events with a very small minute amount of players uh, that way we get a higher EP win so I think last Evil Abyss I took home about 490 EPs uh, the highest I've ever taken from Evil Abyss is 950 but that's again I did that with two people so it was me and uh, Big Daddy Senpai uh, but, you know, again, in a sort of 30-man legion, there's no reason why you can't get at least about 60 EPs per sort of session. And the last one is Sacred Field. This only appears Saturdays and Sundays. Again, you're looking at about close to 100 EPs. If you can get into the top three legions, you can get about 100 EPs from here. Uh, again, the maximum I've received is 1,080. So, you can make ridiculous amount of EPs. Like, when this server opened, I think I was making close to 8 or 9k EPs a week from just events. Uh, this is not including maze bosses and then anything sort of like a farm and then sell as well. Uh, you can sort of, as a, as a newbie player or a newer player, you can join a legion and then make sort of, let's just say, even if you make 1k EPs per week and then slowly progress your way up, 1k EPs on a new server might not might not feel like a lot, but on an older server with 1k EPs you could generally just buy like 120 star pair, and that will really just you know make you go quite a good distance. Uh, there are other ways to make EPs, so uh, the other way to make EPs is farm stuff that people need. Uh, people need talismans. Me personally, I my talismans are awful, and I'm way too lazy to farm them. So you could farm talismans, I know they go for a fair bit. I know that uh, carrier, carrier is absolutely crucial. If you have even about 6k D fire, 5k D fire, and semi okay gears, like you don't need, you don't, one socket gears is really enough to be doing carrier. You could be farming shards, you could be farming gold, and then selling them for EPs. So right now the price is 1 billion is 300 EPs. Uh, and I know the shards go for about 450 EPs. I have seen them go for higher, I personally buy them for 450. So, yeah, like you, um, you know, per week, there's no reason. If you did carry a sort of every day, you could easily get sort of one bill gold. You can easily get like maybe even a stack. And so you're looking at like six, seven hundred gold uh, EPs. Uh, yeah, in, in the future, I can definitely do a carry run. Uh, it's getting late now, so I'm, I'm going to probably tune out. But um, yeah, I could definitely do a carry run for sure. Uh, it, it'd be a bit unfair if I ran carry on this account because I'd get it done in about 10 minutes. Uh, carry can take anywhere between sort of, I think the top top players get it done in about 9 uh, all the way to about, you know, when I first started I was doing carry on, I think it was like 20, 25 minutes. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's all for this video. Uh, I, I will try and get a carry video done at some point. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me here on Little Big Senpai or over here on Hiken. You know, we, we can. I'm, I'm, I, try, I try to stay as active as I can on both accounts, uh, as hard as that can be at times. Or if you guys know me on Facebook, you can feel free to send me a private message there and I'll reply to you as soon as. Uh, with that, I'll see you guys. Peace out.